Hey guys, Jafar here. In this video, we'll cover everything to know about helicopters, including acquisition, controls, fuel consumption, durability, usability, SAM turrets, and storage. The only way you can obtain a minicopter or transport heli is through the Bandit Camp's Airwolf vendor. The minicopter will cost 750 scrap, while the transport heli costs 1,250 scrap, with both coming preloaded with 100 fuel. This can be quite expensive, especially if you're just a solo trying to get your first heli. The only other way to obtain a helicopter is by stealing one from another player. Usually, if you're looking to steal a heli, look to the ruse of bases nearby and see if you can spot any. If you see one, try to be sneaky and bring ladders with you for quick access to their roof. Look out for traps, as most people protect their helis with auto turrets if they're not stored indoors. If you want to learn the helicopter's controls in an easy and stress-free environment, I'd recommend finding a server that lets you spawn them in. Just search up heli or copter into the server browser and you should find many different ones to pick from. Once you are ready to fly, put enough fuel in for your trip and hop into the driver's seat by pressing E. Hold W to start the engine and the rotors will begin to spin above you. If you'd like to move to a better position before flying, you can drive the helicopter around by holding control, which will convert the flight WASD keys to ground movement. Once you are ready to fly, it takes a few seconds to gain enough upwards momentum. Once you begin flying, you'll want to use a combination of both your A and D keys, as well as your mouse to maneuver through the air. Be slow and gentle with your mouse movements, as I find the biggest mistake is overcorrecting, causing you to quickly plummet in one direction. Remember to push forward on your mouse to move forward, pull back to start slowing down and begin moving backwards, and side movements to tilt the heli in that direction. Once you are comfortable with the mouse movements, start combining them with the keyboard A and D keys. The keyboard will rotate the heli around its current position, while the mouse will tilt the heli, causing it to move in that direction. The minicopter is much easier to maneuver compared to the scrap helicopter. However, the faster movements of the minicopter might make it harder for some people to fly. When holding E on the helicopter, you will have an option to push it, which might be useful if you get it stuck. Also, the scrap helicopter contains a searchlight which you can toggle with the F key, making it easier to fly at night or spot enemy players. Both the scrap heli and minicopter eat up 30 low grade fuel per minute. In comparison, the motor rowboat only consumes 6 low grade fuel per minute. The minicopter can store up to 500 low grade fuel at a time, giving your max flight length of 16 minutes and 40 seconds but can also be refueled while flying by holding the ALT key and looking around to access the fuel tank. Once filled, turn to the front to see your fuel levels. Full displays when you have over 100 low grade fuel, it means you have at least 200 seconds of flight. Half tank is reached when you have 50 low grade fuel and 100 seconds of flight, and the red zone indicates you only have 25 low grade fuel remaining and 50 seconds of flight. The amount of fuel you should bring depends on how far and how long you expect to be out using the heli. Also take into account how large your map size is and adjust accordingly. If you're going for a quick trip to a nearby monument, you'll want to have around 150 to 250 fuel. That should give you more than enough flight time to do what you need and get out. To get large quantities of fuel, you'll want to build or locate a small oil refinery. These can be found within monuments and safe zones. To build one for your own personal use, you will need a level 2 workbench and 950 scrap for the tech tree. You can also directly buy one at the outpost for 125 scrap, and research it at a research table for 75 scrap. I recommend using the provided refinery at the outpost as you'll be safe while cooking. Just remember to remain in the inventory so other players don't steal your items. The minicopter contains 750 HP and can be destroyed by a range of explosives and tools, shown here. In comparison, the transport heli contains 1000 HP and will require these tools or explosives to completely destroy. In total, the cheapest way to completely destroy one of these vehicles from a range is using 19 fire arrows for the mini and 25 for the transport heli. This allows you to easily destroy someone's hard earned helicopter from a range without costing you more than a penny. 
The helicopters can be used in many different scenarios to help you obtain loot or a fighting advantage. The minicopter can seat a max of two people, while the transport heli contains two seats at the front and an open area in the back, allowing players to walk around while in the air. Starting off, you can use the minicopter to quickly get onto the cargo ship. The hardest part of the cargo ship is getting on board, especially when there are already people there. The minicopter allows you to fly down and land before the enemy has time to react. However, you are vulnerable if seen or flying too slow. Try to land away from the scientists and enemy players and use cargo crates or the main tower to your advantage for cover. The oil rig really does make it easy with a dedicated landing pad. This allows even the worst flyers to land on the oil rig and later fly away. However, if you plan on opening the lock crate, you might want to move the heli, as this is where the Chinook will come straight down. If players can be seen at the top, I'd recommend flying in low and landing on one of the lower floors to give you time to fight back. The launch site features multiple elite tier crates at the top of the monument. Players can access these by either climbing up with the keycards, flying up after destroying a few SAM turrets, or by performing a suicide jump. I have a dedicated launch site guide which covers these techniques in detail, but the suicide jump requires you to quickly fly in with your helicopter, aiming to hit directly in the middle of the roof. Right before impact, jump out of the heli and you will negate the impact damage, allowing you to loot up the elite tier crates and quickly get off before the radiation kills you. Helicopters can be used to completely skip all of the parkour required to loot the dome's military crates by landing on top. It's best to use a minicopter and land on either the platform before going up or on the walkway itself. Just make sure to be quick to avoid the radiation and being seen. Helis can be used to easily get over compound walls to steal loot residing in large furnaces, oil refineries and crates. However, if the enemy has SAM turrets or auto turrets, it can make heli compound raiding much harder. You can bypass the SAM turrets by flying low to the ground since they're unable to shoot anything lower than themselves. Other useful flying spots for helicopters includes icebergs, safe zones, the snow biome for quick farming runs, and quick evacs after a raid. Be careful within safe zones, as players can steal your vehicle if you hop out of the driver's seat. The surface-to-air missile sites, or SAM sites, is the most effective way of destroying air vehicles. It only takes 6 direct hits from the SAM site to fully destroy the minicopter, and 8 hits to destroy the transport helicopter. You'll want to be careful when flying near large compounds, as they will be the most likely areas where SAM sites are set up. The launch site also contains multiple SAM sites set around the main facility. If you're targeted by one, a barrage of missiles will be sent towards you, but if you can move swiftly, you can escape most, if not all the rockets sent towards you. Like I said previously, you can avoid detection from the SAM sites by flying lower than they have been positioned. This means you can fly lob to bases to get over compound walls, or slowly get enough height to land on the same roof the SAM turrets are on. A SAM site can be purchased at the Outpost Weapon Shop for 500 scrap. They'll come with 1000 HP and can be destroyed with a range of explosive and fire based weapons. Here is a chart to display both the quantity and sulfur required to destroy the SAM site. Overall, an incendiary rocket or satchel charge is the cheapest explosive tool, while the flamethrower is the overall cheapest range tool considering it doesn't require sulfur and only 165 low grade fuel. For the overall cheapest tools to use, you can look at melee weapons. Using a jackhammer will be the quickest to take one down, while a salvage sword is the overall king as it only requires one, is cheap, and can do it in 50 seconds. Both helicopters will decay over time, with the outside decay rate being 8 hours, while the inside decay is 48 hours. The minicopter will be much easier to store, only requiring a 1x1 and triangle foundation, while the transport heli is best left outside. You will occasionally need to repair the helicopters with metal fragments to fight against the decay. The helicopters can serve many uses, but primarily give you the freedom to go and loot what you please, without the risk of roaming the roads or dealing with AI. Make sure to keep your helicopters stored away behind a compound or within a base, otherwise it's almost guaranteed to be stolen. If you enjoyed, a like or sub would be appreciated. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.